So let's begin by looking at the following electric circuit that consists of a battery and three capacitors. So this is essentially our battery. So this end is the lower potential and this end is the higher potential. And when we first place our battery into our, capa into our electric circuit, the electrons will begin to travel from the lower potential VB to the higher potential VA. So electrons will begin to travel along the following circuit. They will split in this section. Some of those electrons will end up on this plate of capacitor number one and some of those electrons will end up on this plate of capacitor number three. Now the electrons here will collect they will push the electrons on this plate away which will travel to this higher potential higher voltage now likewise the electrons here will push these electrons to collect on this plate of capacitor number two and likewise these electrons will push the electrons on this plate to flow in this direction and eventually all the electrons will end up on this side on the higher potential of our battery now eventually all all the capacitors will be fully charged and at that point let's begin with part A calculate the equivalent capacitance that will replace the three capacitors as shown in the following electric circuit. So let's begin by looking at capacitor 2 and capacitor number 3. So let's combine these two capacitors which are connected in series to one another. So recall the equation that gives us the equivalent capacitance for this case for the serious case. So 1 divided by our equivalent capacitance for this case given by simply by C is equal to 1 divided by C2 plus 1 divided by C3. Now we essentially want to combine the following denominators. We want to find our common denominator. So we multiply this by C3, this by C2, the top becomes C3 plus C2, the bottom becomes C2 multiplied by C3. Now we can divide top and bottom by C3 plus C2. This top becomes 1 and the bottom becomes this. So we see 1 divided by C is equal to to 1 divided by C2 times C3 divided by C3 plus C2. So we see that our C, the equivalent capacitance that we get after combining C2 and C3 is equal to C2 multiplied by C3 divided by C3 plus C2. So we're going to use this in step two. Now, what we essentially did is we combined these two capacitors which were in series into the following capacitor which has a capacitance given by C see this ratio. So now we treat these as if they were in parallel with respect to one another. So now we combine the two capacitors which are in parallel. So because these are in parallel, to find the total capacitance, the equivalent capacitance, we simply sum up these capacitance. So C plus C1. Now from this part, we saw that C is equal to this ratio. So C equivalent is equal to C plus C1, which is equal to C2 multiplied by C3 divided by C3 plus C2 plus C1. So this is our equation that gives us the equivalent capacitance that will replace these three capacitors. Now let's move on to step two. Now suppose if we actually know what the quantity of capacitance on C1 is, if we know what C2 is, and if we know what C3 is, calculate the actual value for the equivalent capacitance. So this part essentially asks us to use the equation we were able to determine in step A. So we use this equation. So we have our C equivalent is equal to C2 multiplied by C3 divided by C3 plus C2 plus C1. Now C1 is simply 3 microfarads. Our C2 is 9 microfarads. Our C3 is 6 microfarads. So this is 6 microfarads 
plus 9 microfarads. So this quantity becomes 3.6, this becomes 3, we add those quantities up and we see that our equivalent capacitance is equal to 6.6 .6 microfarads. Now let's move on to part C. In part C, we'd like to calculate the electric charge on each capacitor assuming the voltage within our battery is given to be 12 volts. So, the easiest way to solve this is to first realize that the quantity of voltage on this capacitor is equivalent to the quantity of voltage on our battery. And that's easily seen by the following diagram. So, because these two are in parallel, that means the voltage on this one and the voltage on this one is equal to the voltage on the battery. So, that means the charge on the first capacitor Q1 is equal to C1 multiplied by V1 where V1 is simply the voltage of the battery so let's say that's simply V. Now V is given, v is given to be 12 volts and C1 is given to be 3 microfarads in part B. So we multiply these quantities and we see the charge on capacitor 1 is equal to 36 microcoulombs. So let's go back to this diagram. Notice when we first charge our capacitors, some of that electric charge ends up on this side and some of it goes up. So they essentially divide. So that basically means the quantity of charge on this capacitor and on this capacitor is exactly the same. So if we find the total quantity of charge, we simply take that quantity, subtract the quantity of charge on C1, and that will give us how much charge goes in this direction. So, the Q total can be found by using our C equivalent. So we know our C equivalent is 6.6 .6 microfarads. So the Q total is equal to C equivalent multiplied by the voltage of 12 volts. So 6.6 .6 microfarads multiplied by 12 volts gives us 72 point or 79.2 microcoulombs. So this is the total quantity of charge. So this is how much charge begins to travel in this direction. Now some of that charge goes into this direction. How much? Well this quantity of charge ends up on this side and the end and the rest ends up going in this direction. So we see Q2 is equal to Q3 which is equal to the difference Q total minus Q1 and that gives us well 79.2 minus 36 gives us 43.2 microcoulombs and because these are in series to one another the quantity of charge on Q2 or C2 is equal to the quantity of charge on C3 that's exactly why these two quantities are equal